the solution for humanity. Assalamu alaikum, alaykum brothers and sisters. Let's continue with our very interesting discussion. The real proof is, was this person involved in da'wah beforehand? If the person was involved in da'wah beforehand, and if they stopped being paid, they still continue to be involved in da'wah, then this is a sign of their sincerity and their commitment to da'wah. The other thing is you will find this person was always working way beyond whatever they are paid for. So they may be paid for so many hours. So what does that person do in their free time? Does that person then waste their time or do something else? No. You will find that outside the hours they have to work, they don't even think of hours of working and hours of not working. All they think about is, Alhamdulillah, my life has been made free to give da'wah. And you'll find if this person had a normal job and they were working in the office or they were working somewhere else, they would still be giving da'wah in the evenings and the afternoons and the weekends. You see? So this is the test of that person's sincerity. How committed are they really to da'wah? Obviously then, if that is not the case, then you will have a lot less reward the benefit will be a lot less. And a lot of the benefit is definitely going to those people who are paying you to give da'wah. Okay? And that's what I was going to mention next, that the one who facilitates da'wah also gets the reward of the da'wah. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you actually have to be doing the da'wah if you are paying a da'i or you are giving the materials, or paying for the materials, or facilitating the transmission of the TV station through your donations, or you are paying for dawah materials, or anything that is connected with dawah, whatever it may be. You are facilitating it. All of these things need office workers. You need accountants, you need lawyers, you need a whole range of activities and people doing things. So. Whoever gives their money for these things, then alhamdulillah, they are getting reward for all the da'wah that is taking place as well. They are sharing in the reward. And there is proof for this from the Prophet wasallam in respect to what he mentioned in regard to equipping a mujahid. And have no doubt, brothers and sisters, that anyone involved in da'wah is in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving da'wah is a type of jihad. There is no doubt about that. It is a type of struggle and effort in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So whoever facilitates that, shares in the reward of it. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is also what he said to Ali ibn Talib when he made him the one to hold the banner to lead the attack on the Khaybar which was a group of rebels. And the Prophet ﷺ, he gave the standard to Ali and he told the people, before you fight them, invite them to Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ said, if Allah guides through you just one person to Islam, it is better than all the red camels. So it is better for you than all the red camels. And the Arabs used to consider the red camels the best type of wealth. MashaAllah, today we'd probably like Rolls Royces and Ferraris and Porsche. Yeah? But you know what? The red camels are definitely better. Because if you put one Porsche next to another Porsche, you don't get little baby Porsches, right? 
you know, you have a car, all that happens from the moment you buy it, it goes down in value. That's it. Unless it becomes a collector's piece or in years to come. Right? But red camels, if you have them, they procreate, they reproduce. It's a wealth that is continuous. And these red camels were considered the best of the camels. So imagine, the Prophet is saying, if one person becomes Muslim, it is better than all of the red camels. It's as if to say it's better than all the wealth of this world. Subhanallah. So the reward, brothers, and the reward, sisters, for giving da'wah is tremendous. It is huge. Alhamdulillah. And the one, as we mentioned, who helps the da'wah with their wealth, with their time, alhamdulillah, then that is also they share in the reward. I want to say something important, though. And I don't want the brothers and sisters at home to think that I'm just going to give money to da'wah and you know, that's my job done. Subhanallah, when we do fundraising for our organization, you know what I always say to people? I say to them, listen, if you think giving money is going to be an excuse, if you think giving your money is going to be an excuse for you not to participate and give dawah, keep your money, I don't want it. Keep it. I'm not going to be responsible for you making excuses like that. No, you need to learn how to give dawah yourself. Everyone. Because we need every Muslim to talk to their neighbor, to talk to their friends, to talk to their work colleagues. We need every Muslim to do that. No one should have an excuse, especially the Muslims living amongst non-Muslims, especially. And I'm not talking about our brothers and sisters. You know, you may live in, I don't know, in Pakistan or some place that's only Muslim. Maybe you never saw a non-Muslim ever, a real one, <laughs> live one, like... Oh, there's a real non-Muslim there. I never, all I saw is Muslims. You are not responsible in the same way that a Muslim who lives amongst non-Muslims is responsible. The responsibility for the two is different. Which brings us then on to another subject. And that is the fiqh of da'wah. What is the fiqh of da'wah? What is the ruling on da'wah? Can anyone tell me what is the ruling on da'wah? Is it halal? Is it haram? Is it mustahab? Is it wajib? Is it fard al ain, fard al kifaya? MashaAllah, you've all got some ideas. So let's start with Rahim over there. It is uh, fard al ain. It's fard al ain. What does that mean? Describe to us what fard al ain means if any of the viewers they don't know. It is obligatory that you have to do it. What type of obligation though? Fard al ain. Allah says in Surah Asr, uh, like. It is compulsory. Yeah, but... A minimum four criteria that a person can enter Jannah. And one of it is to invite people to truth. Okay. That's fine. Okay, anyone else? Got anything to add to that? Anything else? Someone wants to say something? Yes, go ahead. Well, it's fard and it's a direct... Fard means it's an obligation. Fard. You have to do it, right? You have to do it. Okay. And uh, it's a direct command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, okay. Fine. Yes. Uh, rather than being an obligation, I believe that it is a compulsion. Not an obligation because uh, Allah says in the Quran, let there be amongst you a band of people okay. inviting all to the way of thy Lord. Oh, excellent. That's good. So, okay, let me just mention these ayahs now. I'm going to mention some verses of Quran. And let's see if we change our mind. Yeah? So let's see. The first verse is exactly what you said. وَلْتُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُنَا إِلَى الْخَيْرِ Which means, let there arise from you a group of people inviting to all that is good, enjoining what is right and forbidding what is wrong. They are the ones who are going to be successful. Masha, it's a very strong encouragement. You want to be successful? But as the brother said, Allah used the term, وَلْتُكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ Let there arise from you an ummah, which means a group of people. So this ayah definitely seems to be identifying that there should be a group of people amongst the Muslims whose specific duty and obligation or whose specific task is to 
enjoying what is right and forbid what is wrong, to call to all that is good, yeah? So what do we call this type of obligation? Fard al-kifaya. Fard al-kifaya, which means a communal obligation. A communal obligation is when something has to be done. It is an obligation, but not upon every single individual, but it is an obligation upon some people in the community to do it. And if some people in the community don't do it, then everybody is sinful. But as long as some people are doing it, then we're all excused. So this ayah seems to suggest, doesn't it, that dawah is fard al-kifaya. It seems to suggest that, yes or no? Yeah, what do you think? No. On its own. On that ayah, just on its own. On its own, full time, huh? yes. Okay, that's all we want now. So the ayah, on its own, suggests that. But that's, I see the brothers thinking, no, 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 this is not the only statement in the Qur'an. This is not the only saying. We also have the hadith of the Prophet wasallam. yes? So let's see what else we have. We also have, you are the best of peoples evolved for mankind. Why? Ta'maruna bil ma'arufi wa tanhawna anil munkari wa tu'minuna billah. Right? So again, this seems to be suggesting something to do with the collective. You are the best of peoples generally. You are the best of peoples raised up for mankind. But here is the condition. As a people, as an ummah, we must have this quality of enjoining the right and forbidding the wrong and believing in Allah. If we were to remove that quality, and that's what I suggested earlier, that we've become an inward-looking nation. We concentrate a lot about the fiqh of this and the fiqh of that, and do we wiggle this and put our hands like that? But there is evil all around us, and what do we do to change it? No. The hallmark of this ummah, the reason why we're the best of nations, is because we enjoy what is right and forbid what is wrong. And this is what Umar ibn al-Khattab said, if you stop enjoying what is right and forbidding what is wrong, then you can't refer to yourself as the best of nations anymore. Okay, brothers and sisters, we're going away for a break. Don't go away. We'll be back soon, inshallah. The year that saw Dr. Zakir Naik in his first public press debate. For ages, freedom of expression has been a debatable issue. Eminent personalities came together to discuss the burning topic. Usually the arguments of most secularists are, if you're a religious person, therefore by the very fact you're fundamentalist, and this is false. Father M. Pereira. I'm a religious person, but I'm not a fundamentalist. The antiword for secularism is theism. To believe in God, to believe in the world hereafter. Dr. Vasudev Vyas. To believe in the principle that whatever we are doing here, we have to answer somewhere. Everything can be criticized. Why not? Whether it is a religion, whether it's a religious person, whether it's king. Mr. Ashok Shahani. That is freedom of expression. So Taslima was quoted wrongly. Fundamentalism means strictly adhering to the ancient or fundamental principles or doctrines of a religion, especially Islam. And Dr. Zakir Naik. The word Islam is mentioned in the latest edition of the Oxford Dictionary. So fundamentalist mainly refers to a Muslim who follow the fundamentals of Islam. If it means that, I'm proud and I'm happy to be a fundamentalist Muslim. Because I know that the fundamentals of Islam are good, 
They are correct. They are scientific. They are scientific. Is religious fundamentalism a stumbling block to the freedom of expression in Crossfire this Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Salaam alaikum. Let's continue with our very interesting discussion. So again, this seems to suggest a type of collective obligation. Okay, how about this ayah? Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair preaching and argue with them in the way that is best. Yes, brother. As one of the sheikh said uh, before, that honey attracts more bees than vinegar. Right, so uh, why not call them to the way of Allah with wisdom? like with practical wisdom, giving logic, reasoning, and beautiful preaching, rather than throwing stones at them, yes. rather than saying what's bad in your religion, why don't we say what's good in our religion? So, I believe. Okay. So, this ayah actually teaches us something about the methodology of Tao. It teaches us something about the manners and the methodology of Tao. The first thing we have to realize is, call to the way of your Lord. This is the first thing we want to note. So the way we are calling is to the way of our Lord. So we are not inviting people to become Indians, or to become Indian Muslims, or to become Pakistanis, or Saudis, or Moroccans, or whatever. In other words, we're not inviting people to follow our cultural habits. Unfortunately, this is the case. When some Muslims are giving dawah, they are not inviting people to Islam as such. They're inviting people to their cultural interpretations of what Islam is. And sometimes they will invite people to join their particular school of thought. Or they will be inviting people to join their group or their party or to follow a particular imam or to follow a particular sheikh and none of this is calling to the way of your lord the dawa is we are calling to allah which means we are calling to la ilaha illallah this brothers sisters listeners is very 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 important we are calling to we are calling to Allah, which means our dawah is to La ilaha illallah, to single out Allah for worship. And this also teaches us something important about the methodology, the priorities of dawah. The priorities of dawah, brothers and sisters, is that we are calling to Allah first and for Allah alone to be worshipped first. We are not calling people to stop eating pork. We are not calling people to wear hijab. We are not calling people to implement the hudud upon them. And this is exactly what Aisha said, something similar to this. She said the Prophet did not start by saying to the people, stop fornicating. Because they would have said, we will never stop fornicating. He did not start by saying to them, stop drinking. Because the people would have said, we will never stop drinking. But the first things he called them to was to the oneness of Allah, to the akhirah, to the belief in the afterlife. Because most people, brothers and sisters, what is their disease? What is their real disease is love of the dunya. That's their problem. So the cure for this is to know about the akhirah. You see, being a da'i is sometimes a little bit like being a doctor. You have to know what medicine to give to who. And we don't want to just concern ourselves with curing the symptoms and not curing the actual disease. So, Allah is saying, call to the way of your Lord, bil hikmati, with wisdom, wal al hasna, which means with a good mawidha, a good admonition, and discuss with them with the ways that are best. Now some scholars, they explain this in a very nice way. They said that 
Hikmah means the Qur'an and the Sunnah. In other words, it means Allah says and the Messenger says. You see, there are some people, if you say to them, this is what God told you to do, that's enough. They don't need to hear anything else. God told me to do that? Okay, I'll do it. But other people, they may recognize that. They may say, yes, yes, you know, okay, God said this and God said that. But you know, due to their love and their attachment to the world and the things of the world, they don't act upon it. So these people need something else. They need this mawadah. They need to be reminded of what? The akhirah. The torment of the grave, the day of judgment, the hellfire, the paradise. This is the mawadah al-hasna. A good admonition is to remind people of the punishment of Allah. What's the consequence of disobeying Allah in this life and the next? Really what Allah is showing us is personality types here. Different people respond to different types of methods. Some people, they just need to know the truth and they follow it. Others, they need more. They need to be shaken up. And then others, what do they want? They want people to reason with them. They want things to be explained to them. They like things to be rationalized. This is why Dr. Zakir is very successful. I think here, maybe in India especially, people love that. They love to have a really good explanation for things. And a lot of these things, you can never prove them exactly. But you know what? That sounds like a reasonable explanation. That's what they want to hear. They want to hear a reasonable explanation. So these are different types of people. And this is how we call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, ala basira, the other ayah mentions, call to the way of your Lord. Look how the Prophet is saying, brothers. Kul hadihi sabili. The Prophet is saying, this is my way. This is my way. You want to know the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Hadihi sabili, this is my way. It shows that calling to Allah is part of the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. With knowledge, basira means certain and definite knowledge. So you should be calling to this way with knowledge. That's a precondition. Ana wa man atabaani. So this also shows that if you are following the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you should also be calling to Allah with certain knowledge. Which now begins to indicate that maybe this is not only a communal obligation. Isn't this something therefore incumbent upon everybody? Now, if we look to the actual hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, بَلِّغُوا anni wa ayah Convey from me, even if it is an ayah. This is not indicating something that is merely a communal obligation of falad al kifaya the apparent meaning of this is to everybody. Because why would it be one ayah? Why would the Prophet say, convey from me even if it is an ayah? This is a general command that even if you understand one ayah, even if you know one ayah, convey it. So this infers that the duty of da'wah depends upon your circumstances. So the other way we could explain, waltukum minkum ummatun, let there arise from you a group of people, could also mean that the obligation, you have to have a group of people who are dedicated to calling to Islam. It doesn't mean you're devolved of your responsibility, but you also need amongst you a dedicated group of people. And that goes back to what you were saying, Arshi, about paying people, right? Right. Okay, so... Paying people and having organizations who are focused and dedicated on da'wah is a means of fulfilling this command. Because does anyone in this room think that da'wah could really be effectively done merely on a voluntary basis? What do you think? Do you think so? What do you think? What's your opinion? Do you think we can do this da'wah effectively in the modern age looking at the Christian missionaries? Looking at the atheist missionaries. Because atheism has become now a missionary belief system. 
Do you really think that merely running things on a voluntary basis, we are going to be able to compete with that type of attack? I certainly do not believe so. I do not believe so. I believe we need dedicated people. I believe we need universities dedicated to learning how to give dawah. I do believe that it has to be almost a career path for people. And I don't mean a career, obviously, in the mal bin niyati. If your intention is to become a da'i because you want to make money, that's what you'll get. You won't get reward from it. You'll get your money and you won't get the ajr. But in terms of our need, we definitely, in my opinion, need dedicated, focused organizations and teams of people to be giving da'wah. I definitely believe that. And I believe that that's part of the obligation of fulfilling this ayah. That's it. And we'll be continuing next time, inshallah. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all. Make sure you all come, brothers. Inshallah. We'll see you then. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 32301. IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113201. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity.